Welcome to part one of the series, The Abrahamic Promises as a Foundation for the Gospel of the Kingdom. In the Bible, the patriarch Abraham was given three distinct promises by Yahweh God. Let us briefly review those promises and consider their impact on the course of history, the present, and their implications for the future. The three promises are summarized in this way, the promise of land, the promise of descendants, and the promise of blessing to all nations. When God initially called upon Abraham, his name was Abram, a name meaning exalted father. This appears ironic as during God's call, Abraham had no children. In the passages we are about to explore, we will encounter all three promises, but we will focus our attention on understanding the first promise, the promise of land at this time. Now let's turn to Genesis 12, 1 through 7 for our first reading. Now Yahweh said to Abram, Get up and leave your country and your relatives and your father's house and go to the land I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse the one who curses you, and through you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went and did as Yahweh had instructed him, along with Lot. At the time he departed from Haran, Abram was seventy-five years old. Abram took his wife Sarai, along with his brother's son, Lot, all their possessions that had been gathered, and all the people they had acquired in Haran, and set out to go to the land of Canaan. When they arrived in the land of Canaan, Abram passed through to the place of Shechem, to the oak of Moreh. At that time the Canaanites were inhabiting the land. Then Yahweh appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So Abram built an altar to Yahweh, who had appeared to him in that place. For context, during the era of Abraham, Haran was a city situated in ancient Mesopotamia, which corresponds to what is now southeastern Turkey. Abraham's origins trace back to Ur of the Chaldeans, where he was born to a man named Terah. Initially, Abraham, along with several family members, departed from Ur with the intention of traveling to Canaan. However, they halted their journey and settled in Haran, as described in Genesis 11, 27, and 28. It was in Haran that God encountered Abraham and summoned him to resume his expedition toward Canaan. Canaan was situated along the eastern shore of the Mediterranean Sea, roughly corresponding to modern-day Israel, Palestine, parts of Jordan, and Lebanon. In Genesis chapter 12, the land of Canaan was the promise that God made to Abraham and his offspring. It's important to recognize that in the original Hebrew text, the word offspring is singular, even though in English it can refer to one or many individuals. Therefore, the context in which the word is used must be considered in order to know if it refers to one or more than one. Perhaps another suitable term to consider here is descendant, used in the singular form. Please bear in mind this distinction, as we will explore the profound significance of the use of the singular word descendant or offspring later in the series when we come to the New Testament's explanation. Once Abraham had made his way to the land or territory of Canaan, God told him at Genesis 13, 14 through 17, Lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are. Look northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land you see I will give to you and to your offspring forever, and I will make your descendants as numerous as the dust of the earth, so that if someone could count the dust of the earth, your descendants would also be able to be counted. Arise, walk up and down in the land, for I will give it to you. Finally, when God changed his name from Abram to Abraham, meaning father of a multitude, he said to Abraham at Genesis 17, 4 through 8, Behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer will your name be Abram, but it shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you extremely fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall proceed forth from you. And I will establish my covenant between myself and your descendants after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your descendants after you and I will give to you and your descendants after you the land you have traveled to, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. 
In these verses, several key points are established. Firstly, a tangible physical land on the earth is promised to Abraham and his descendants. Possession and ownership of this land is described as being everlasting, mirroring the eternal nature of the covenant or agreement between Abraham, his descendants, and Yahweh God. Notably, there are no conditions attached to this covenant, and the wording used by God implies its absolute fulfillment. Secondly, in addition to becoming the patriarch of the Hebrew people, and by extension the nation of Israel, Abraham is destined to be the father of a multitude of nations. A multitude of nations clearly implies more than just the Hebrew people. Before delving into the nature and details of the second promise God made to Abraham, that he would have an uncountable multitude of descendants. We must pose a question or two. Did Abraham ever truly own or possess the land he was promised? And have any of his descendants ever possessed the land of promise in an uninterrupted or everlasting way? We will address these questions and explore additional topics as we proceed in this series.